All you have to do is mix up a golf club, a home-baked jelly roll, and a bit of mind reading, and you have a story called The Man Who Loved Jelly Roll. The story we're going to tell you on Theater 5. <laughs> Mr. Lambert, I wondered how soon you were going to wake up. Uh, what? Uh, uh, who? Who are you? Your nurse, Alice Collins. Nurse? You're in a hospital, Mr. Lambert. But don't be alarmed. There's nothing seriously wrong with you. But, uh, what, what happened to me? You had an accident last night. You were struck on the head by a golf club. You were driven here by your wife and a man named Mr. Tucker. Oh, yes. Joe Tucker. A relative of yours? He was terribly upset about you. Uh, no, no. Joe is my assistant at the office. Uh -huh. Oh. Yes, I remember now. It, it is all coming into focus. Uh, my wife had invited Joe to our home for dinner, and, uh... And what? Go on, Mr. Lambert. Well, we were in the basement, uh, Joe and I, uh, while Edith was upstairs in the kitchen. Oh, we talked business for a few minutes, and then uh, Joe picked up one of my golf clubs, and, uh... Well, he took a few practice swings with it, and... Oh, now, that's all I remember. I don't wonder. A swinging golf club can be fatal, but you were lucky. You received only a glancing blow. Well, how much damage was done to my head? You have a nasty cut behind your left ear. That's about all. You'll be kept here today for observation, but if all goes well, the doctor says you might go home tomorrow afternoon. Oh. Oh, certainly, Miss Collins. Please do. But please do what? Uh, go down to the cafeteria and have coffee with Dr. Packard. How did you know that's what I was thinking of doing? I didn't say so. Uh, no, but it was very clear to me, uh, just as if you'd spoken out loud. I don't understand. I'd better... No, 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 wait. Uh, don't call the doctor. Uh, not just yet, anyway. Oh, Mr. Lambert, you're reading my thoughts. A and you can forget about that. Uh, I assure you, I don't need it. You... Don't need what? A restraining sheet. That's what you have in mind, isn't it? Yes. Yes, Miss Collins, you're quite right. Just as you're thinking, it is fantastic. And now you're wondering how it's possible for me to know what you're thinking. Isn't that so? Yes, yes. Well, I can't understand it myself. But your every thought is coming to me unspoken. And now you're thinking of telling Dr. Packard about this, but... Please don't. Don't tell anybody. Maybe this hallucination or whatever it is will disappear. Oh, Mr. Lambert, I... I know, I know. You're thinking of yourself. I wouldn't dare tell anybody. They'd say Alice Collins is losing her mind. Exactly. And for all I know, Mr. Lambert, that may be true. <laughs> Mr. Lambert? Oh, Miss Collins, I didn't hear you come in. And do you know why I came in? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, you're about to say that my wife has come to visit me. And you're wondering whether I can read her thoughts, too. You're so right. Well, I don't know whether I can or not, but uh, I'll soon find out. Uh, please show her in and uh, leave us alone, would you please? Very well. Um, you may come in, Mrs. Lambert. Oh, thank you, nurse. Oh, Fred, you poor darling. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm fine, Edith. I have a slight headache, that's all. I'm so glad to see you, sweetheart. Oh, Fred, I could hardly sleep. I was so worried. Worried? Are you sure? Well, of course. Joe and I were beside ourselves. It was like a... Ghastly nightmare. Fred, how did you know I was going to say... Fred... You've turned white as a sheet. What are you, what are you staring that at? That cardboard box you brought with you. What's in it? Shh, sh not so loud. Well, what's in it, I said. Never mind. Oh. Uh, I know what's in it. One of your homemade jelly rolls. Why, 
Yes, your favorite dessert in all the world. I, I baked it this morning just for you. Just for me is right. Give me that box. Uh, Fred! There it is. Look at it. One of Edith Lambert's famous jelly rolls. Here, eat a piece. Try a small bite for flavor. No, I can't... Finish the sentence, Edith. I can't because it's poisoned. Fred! Oh, dear heaven. How does Fred know? How did he find out? Did someone see me take that bottle from the medicine closet? No, impossible. I was alone in the house. Then how could he know? Did Joe Tucker tell him? Joe wouldn't dare tell Fred. Not after he tried to kill him with a golf club and failed. Fred, stop it. I'm afraid of you. I'm afraid no, of you. No, no, Edith. I'm afraid of you. Uh, my wife. My own dear wife. How did it happen without my suspecting it? When did it all begin? Tell me, Edith. When did you both decide that I had to die? We didn't. You, you must be insane. The accident, it did something strange to you. Indeed it did. But it was no accident, Edith. Joe bungled the attempt because he was nervous and angry. Oh, no. And now you're remembering what Joe told you after I fell to the floor. He told you about my business talk before the golf club incident. And I was thinking of terminating his contract. And now my homicidal partner... You're sweating with terror and thinking of running out of this room. Fred, everything you said is a lie. And you know it isn't. I read you so clearly. Yes, you're right. You should phone Joe Tucker and ask him what to do. But, but he won't know either. He'll be every bit as panic-stricken as you are. Oh, yes, he is. You'd better take the poisoned evidence out with you. But be very careful where you dispose of it. You wouldn't want to poison a stray dog, would you? Oh! <laughs> well, Mr. Lambert, I see you've moved out of bed into a chair. Good for you. I'm Dr. Blaine Packard. I'm glad to see you, Doctor. How's the head feeling? Oh, well enough, I guess. Uh, doctor, may I ask you something? Uh, it's, it's quite serious. Go ahead. Uh, do you know anything about telepathy, extra sensory perception, the ability to read minds. Well, I've read up on it, of course. Well, could could such a phenomenon follow a head injury like mine? Oh, I doubt it, Mr. Lambert. At least I've never heard of such a reaction. Why do you ask? Because, Doctor, ever since I woke up this morning, I can do it. Now, it's obvious that you don't believe me. In in fact, you've already dismissed that thought. What? And now, your mind is dwelling on something that's distinctly non-medical. Okay, Doctor. Forget it. I hope you and my nurse enjoy your evening together. But Miss Collins told you that? No, she didn't. Poor Miss Collins. What do you mean, poor Miss Collins? You're thinking of bawling her out when you meet her in the restaurant, aren't you? You're darn well right I am. She had no business to tell you that, Mr. Lambert. No business at all. Well, Joe Tucker. Come in, Joe. I've been expecting you. Fred, what's going on? Edith called me at the office when I got back from lunch. What the devil was all that nonsense you handed her about a, a poison cake or something? Uh, no, it was jelly roll, Joe. My favorite dessert in all the world. Whatever it was doesn't matter, but... That was a terrible accusation you made, Fred. What was the idea? She was sobbing so hard she could hardly talk. You've got her scared to death. As scared as you are, Joe. What are you talking about? Why, why, why should I be scared? Because you're afraid that I can read the thoughts in your mind, too. Uh, Fred, that, that mind-reading thing's a lot of hooey. Oh, is it? Right now, your mind's an open book. Quote, I wonder if this louse really does know what I'm thinking. No. How could he? People can't really read minds. Only on the stage, where it's a trick. Fred. You want to hear more of your thoughts, Joe? Okay. How did Fred know that jelly roll was poisoned? Oh, no. No, maybe maybe Edith got scared and, and confessed the whole plot. Maybe she even told him that I suggested the poison. Fred, stop it. Nothing doing. Your thoughts are getting much more interesting. Fred really is reading my mind. I should hit him again with that golf club. Yes, I really should have finished him off when he was lying there unconscious. 
It would still have looked like an accident. How am I doing, Joe? <laughs> Fred, old man, now listen, I hate to say this, but as your friend, I'd be unkind not to. I know you're not aware of it, but you've been babbling along and not making any sense. Hmm. I think you're sick, Fred. Sicker than you realize. Yeah, I'm sick, all right. Sick about you and Edith. Now, you've got to stop that kind of crazy talk. Now, look, maybe... Maybe a little fresh air will clear your mind. Come on, let, no. let me help you over to the window. No, no, thank you. This is the tenth floor. Oh, Fred, now, we're going to the window. No, let go of me. Let go of me. Nurse! Nurse! Mr. Lambert! What is it? What's happened? Oh, I... I, I, I upset my table by accident. I'm, I'm very sorry. Oh, oh, that's okay. I'll clear up the mess in the jiffy. No, 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 no. Wait, my visitor here is just leaving. Would you be good enough to show him out, please? Tucker speaking. Joe, this is Edith. Where have you been? I've been trying to get you ever since noon. I was walking. I was afraid to go home. Joe, I'm afraid to go anywhere. Did you see Fred? Yes, and he accused me too. You were right. He knows everything. But how? I don't know. It's fantastic. Before today, I was only worried about my contract. Now I'm worried about a murder charge. A murder? Oh, no. Joe, what are we going to do? It's up to you, Edith. You've got to go back to the hospital tonight and convince Fred that he's wrong about the whole thing. Tell him he, he tell him he dreamed it. Tell him anything. But how can I? He'll know what I'm thinking. Edith, don't argue. It's our last chance. If Fred tells anybody about what we tried to do to him, the whole world will cave in on our heads. <laughs> Edith, you look a bit pale tonight. Are you tired? No. I'm just sick at heart, Fred, about the way you acted when I was here this morning. You accused me of horrible things that just aren't true. And Joe called and, and said you accused him, too. Did Joe tell you about the window incident? No. What does that mean? And never mind. I can see that he didn't mention it. I also see that you brought me another jelly roll. Yes, dear, and I do hope that you eat it. At least taste it to prove that you can trust me. Of course I'll eat it. Well, you're not afraid? Oh, no, not of this one. Uh, your mind tells me it's perfectly safe. Mmm, delicious. H have a bite. No, Fred, I couldn't. I haven't eaten all day. I've, I've felt too miserable. Oh, darling, how could you possibly have suspected me of putting something awful into that jelly roll this morning? I know very well you did, Edith. So there's no use denying it. But how can you be so cruel to me? And, and why do you keep up that pretense of being able to read my thoughts? Because I can. Very well. What am I thinking now? Tell me. Okay. You're wondering whether I've told anybody about the plot that you and Joe cooked up to get me out of the way. That isn't true. And to ease your mind, Edith, I haven't told a soul. Oh. Yes, relieved, aren't you? It's a great weight off your mind. But now here comes a dark thought. You're wishing you'd poison this jelly roll, too, so that I'd never live to tell anybody. Fred. But I might talk at any time. So with that hold over you, I feel fairly safe. Oh. If I should die suddenly, the police would know exactly where to look. Oh, Fred, Fred. And now, Fred. my love, I have a slight headache. You'd be doing me a great kindness if you'd get out of here and let me go to sleep. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Lambert. It looks as though I've awakened you. Uh, what? Uh, who, who are you? Blaine Packard, your doctor. Doctor? What, what, what is this place? It looks like a hospital room. You... You mean to say you don't remember yesterday? What? Was I here yesterday? Well, of course. You and I had a talk. Oh, what, uh... What day is this? Wednesday. You were brought here Monday night. What for? Uh, Mr. Lambert, I'd like to carry out a simple test. I'll concentrate on the reason why you were brought here. 
And you try to tell me what's in my mind. Look, Doctor, if you're trying to use me as a guinea pig for mental telepathy or whatever you call it, I just won't have it. Suppose you dispense with all that vaudeville nonsense and tell me why I'm a patient in this hospital. Very well. On Monday night, you received an accidental blow on the head by a golf club. Joe Tucker. Right. Your wife and Mr. Tucker drove you here thinking the worst. Luckily, however, your injury was only slight. No fracture, no concussion. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you could go home this afternoon. Well, that's a relief. What about my wife? Uh, was she here yesterday? Yes, I'm told she was here twice. Oh, poor Edith. She must have been worried to death. She was. As one of the nurses said, she looked a wreck. Oh, dear. Uh, by the way, I don't suppose you remember your nurse, uh, Miss Collins? No, no, doctor, I don't. The entire day is an absolute blank. Uh. Now, Mr. Lambert, if you'll sit up, I'd like to give you a thorough physical examination. Okay. But uh, what I think I really need is a mental examination. Now, you've already had that, Mr. Lambert, and I gave you a straight A. Yes? Oh, Mrs. Lambert, good afternoon. Come right in. Thank you, Doctor. A nurse called and told me I could take my husband home, but before I go up to his room, I'd like to talk to you, if I may. Of course. Do sit down. Thank you. Dr. Packard, how is my husband? Oh, he's perfectly fine. The question is, how are you? Why do you ask? Well, you seem terribly distraught. I know the anguish you've suffered, naturally, but I suggest you try to compose yourself for the sake of your own health. But, Doctor, my husband's accident was so terrifying. I, I've been driven almost out of my mind with worry. Well, that's understandable, but now, happily, it's all over. And I assure you, there's nothing to fear. But is it all over? I mean, is Fred absolutely all right? Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't permit him to leave the hospital. I hope you're right. You're still not convinced? Well... Dr. Packard, did Fred tell you anything that happened yesterday, either about my visits or Mr. Tucker's visit? No, not a word. As a matter of fact, I, uh, as I discovered this morning, he doesn't even remember yesterday. Are you sure? Positive. The entire day is a perfect blank in his mind. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Feeling better now? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, you certainly look better. A little less like a ghost. Well, thank you, Doctor. I'm sorry I took up so much of your time. Oh, not I... at all, Mrs. Lambert. I quite understand your concern. And now I suggest that you go up and rescue your husband. He's waiting anxiously for you to take him home. Hand me your plate, Fred. I'll give you another piece of steak. Oh, no, Edith. For once, I've had enough steak. Oh, what a homecoming dinner. <laughs> well, I suppose any home cooking would taste better than a hospital dinner, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, don't ask me, sweetheart. I have no idea what they served me last night. Funny, I don't remember your visits yesterday. How, how did I seem to you? Oh, perfectly normal. I wouldn't have known there was anything wrong with you at all. Well, how did I act with Joe? Did he say I sounded nutty or something? No, he just told me you were fine. Of course, he was relieved that you'd forgiven him for the accident. Oh, those things happen, and they can't be helped. I just hope he'll understand about his contract, that's all. What about his contract, Fred? Well, I've decided not to renew it. Oh, not for any reason that I can put my finger on. I just feel somehow that it's for the best. He's just got to go. Well, we can't worry about Joe, can we? No, not tonight, sweetheart. We're together again, and that's all that matters. Yes, it is. Now, what about dessert? Hmm, dessert. What are you going to tempt me with? Can't you guess? <laughs> I think I can. Your homemade jelly roll? Of course. I made it for you while you were in the hospital, but you uh, couldn't eat it. I'll bring it right in. Uh, no, Edith. Hmm? Uh, wait a second. Yes, dear? I don't want to hurt your feelings, but... Uh, but what, Fred? It's funny, but for some reason, I've suddenly lost my taste for Jelly Roll. <laughs> Presented The Man Who Loved Jelly Roll, written by Albert G. Miller and directed by Warren Somerville. 
In the cast, James Monk, Gertrude Warner, Fran Carlin, Ralph Camargo, and George Petrie. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, Terry Ross. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Blostotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.